Hi everyone, Brandon here with GDNT Basics Video Question Line. Uh, the topic for today is flatness uh, and it's surface versus feature of size flatness. Um, the question that we have is from Cody. Um, what he stated here was, one of the engineers here released a drawing that has the flatness symbol placed beneath the size dimension. I inspected flatness on the top and bottom surfaces and was told by the engineer that my inspection was incorrect. How can this be incorrect? Um, so Cody, since you stated that uh, it was with the, fe the feature of size or the size dimension, um, that does mean that it's going to be flatness um, on a uh, feature of size or flatness DMP, um, the derived medial plane. Um, so real quick, let's just look at regular flatness and what the requirements are here for regular flatness. So um, this one here, I think this one uh, seems to make sense to most everybody. Um, we see a flatness call out on uh, this particular little drawing example that they have here. It's extended out off of the surface. It's away from the feature of size. It's not in line with it in any way. Um, so this one is just uh, flatness on a surface. So on this one here, um, this is a, it's a 3D uh, tolerance zone. We have two parallel planes. Um, it states um, that it's 50 microns for flatness. So as they show in the tolerance zone here, the, the total distance here is going to be um, 50 microns or um, split in half is uh, 0.025 between the two, but it's a total uh, distance between these two planes of 50. Uh, and this only controls this top surface that it's pointing to. That's the only control that it has. It's not relative to any datums. Um, and so we're just looking at a planar surface here. Um, and we're going to we're going to talk about the difference here real quick on the inspection, uh, but I just wanted to show these rules here for for uh, flatness on a surface. Uh, and one thing that I do like here on this to point out is this is very common to use as a qualifier when the primary datum is a planar surface. Um, so uh, very common to see for that. Um, not as common to see on any other surfaces um, out on the drawing because uh, there are typically other uh, geometric controls that are indirectly controlling flatness, um, such as parallelism, that's going to control flatness. But um, you may see it underneath parallelism as a, a, a refinement um, to what's there. Um, so this one is the one that everybody seems to to get. And it sounds like you did uh, this type of inspection on the top and then did another one on the bottom and reported the flatness error for both. Uh, but let's take a, re re a real quick look here at what the DMP flatness is. Go back here. Okay, so on this one here, um, up at the top, it says flatness as applied to a feature of size automatically overrides number one. So remember when we we're talking about a surface, rule number one is still in effect here. Uh, but now that this has been applied um, in your CMM software, it's going to void rule number one. Um, so now this flatness is, um, is, a, is separate. Remember, with, with surface flatness, um, we still have to meet that perfect form at maximum material condition um, because we have our envelope, you know, the envelope principle for rule number one. Well, when we're talking about DMP, um, that's gone. Um, so if you have gotten to our virtual condition lesson um, in the maximum material boundaries um, section, um, they go back and they talk about this specifically. Um, but what we get here now, because this is applied directly to the feature of size. It's directly underneath it. Um, then you see the, the uh, uh, dimension lines there below it. So this is uh, DMP flatness. Uh, one thing we get questions about quite a bit is, um, why is there not any kind of uh, stated difference on a drawing um, when it is uh, applying to the derived medial plane versus a surface? Um, there's only one symbol for flatness. Um, so those are the rules. There's only one symbol, just like for straightness, there's only one. Uh, but we can have feature of size straightness. We can have feature of size flatness. Um, we just have to really pay attention to how it's applied. And that's not just the case here for these two. That's also the case for datums in general. Uh, we have to pay attention to whether it's pointing to a surface feature or a feature of size. It's going to mean two completely different things. Um, but think about the orientation controls with angularity, perpendicularity, and parallelism. Um, they can be applied to a surface or a feature of size, and we just have to pay attention to how it's being applied on the drawing uh, because there will be two different sets of rules. 
So on this one here, um, it's still a three-dimensional tolerance zone, um, but now um, it's the derived median plane of the feature, and it must fall within the two tolerance zones. So um, they show you here that, that this can and will bend. In fact, that's why we use it, uh, because we know that it's going to bend, and this would never pass for a typical um, flatness requirement. Uh, think about like a very large sheet of, of uh, metal. Uh, it may have some bow to it um, over the entire plate. If we're going to throw it up on a laser and start cutting it up into much smaller pieces, um, it's those individual pieces aren't going to have that massive bow to it. But if we were to do an inspection on the plate uh, incoming, um, rule number one, it, it's not going to pass rule number one based off of the size requirements of the thickness of the of that sheet metal. And it doesn't just apply to sheet metal. There's all different kinds of materials. Um, even just parts, if if an engineer knows that he's going to have a, or he or she is going to have a part uh, machined to a certain thickness, but after it's released, it's going to bow. And there are no requirements to go back and take the, uh, the bow back out to try to flatten it out. They could use flatness DMP there. Um, it's, it's not relative to any datums. Uh, it is a form control. Uh, but it would allow the, the plate or the part to bow, uh, it's still going to have to pass the size requirements. Um, so on this one here, this 5 millimeter, plus or minus 0.1, it's still going to have to pass that no matter what at any given two-point check. Um, but it's not going to be held to the rule number one envelope requirement. Um, now, this one is very unique. Um, uh, talking about the flatness DMP, uh, this can be applied at regardless of feature size. It can be applied at maximum material condition. Uh, in fact, uh, we even state in our course, most often when we see this, it is going to be at a maximum material condition. Um, now we can gauge it when we do that. We can use a functional gauge to inspect it. Um, so when they came out with this one, it really threw everybody for a loop that we can have those modifiers applied to this, unlike flatness on a surface. Um, but because flatness is on a surface, just like any surface control, uh, think about surface profile. Uh, we're not allowed to use the MMC modifier on anything that's just controlling the surface uh, because we don't have a maximum material condition on a surface. Okay, so let's take a look at this here. I threw this in here just, just for a quick visual um, on the difference between uh, uh, flatness applied to a surface or flatness on the DMP. Um, over here on the left, on the surface, um, now, as, as states here, usually flatness is measured with a CMM. Um, if, if you have a CMM, then yeah, sure. If you don't have a CMM, then surface flatness, um, there's uh, the method that I prefer to use and I always talk about is um, putting it up on machinist jacks, getting it leveled out with a dial indicator here, pointing down, finding, you know, around this, finding my high points, um, getting those high points all zeroed out using three machinist jacks. Um, getting it all zeroed out and then setting my, you know, I'll have my dial indicator set to zero, run across this surface any direction, and I'm looking for drops in the needle there, uh, any kind of deviation for that. Now, over here on the right-hand side, on the DMP, um, we have to get um, the point over here on this side of the surface and then back over here on the opposed side and do that all across. We're getting them on both surfaces. We're taking all these probe points over here. Um, now, this one, this one is one that I highly recommend going to a CMM for, um, but we need those, uh, those points from both, you know, the derived medial points from both sides um, so we can go through and calculate these planes. I mean, like I showed in the previous image, we're going to have this three-dimensional plane that's going to have bow to it. Um, so we need to get all of those points to come in, you know, from the top and from the bottom to find out how much bow there actually is in it because... We know that there's going to be bow. That's why we're applying DMP flatness to it. Um, so we can calculate or let the software calculate uh, whether or not this is actually uh, within the tolerance zone. Now, one thing just to make clear real quick on DMP flatness, it's still two parallel planes. They don't bow. It's going to be the surface uh, or the, the derived medial plane that's going to have all the bow to it. So... Uh, Real quick there, Cody, uh, it is two totally different requirements. Um, if, it, if it is with that, that feature of size, if it's with that size dimension, just remember you have to switch over um, to DMP flatness. Uh, it's a totally different requirement.
Okay, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, keep an eye out for any future videos or for the future videos that we're going to be releasing uh, next week. Uh, we're, we're trying to release uh, uh, at least a few every week so we can get this library built up for you guys and have all these videos for you to go back and, and watch these questions. Um, you may find specific topics in there that you have questions on and you can watch these videos. All right, everybody have a good day and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.